So why are all these Canadian study permit applications being rejected? Well, the scenario has been carried out since last year, since 2021, September intake, and I want to tell you all about it. See, what happened during the COVID times was that people were not able to get the visas and most of the IRCC applic application offices were closed. They were not able to process the application and that's why they started giving out AIPs. AIPs are so sort of approvals in principle, but at the same point of time, you still have to go through a lot of verification, background verification, medicals, police verification, all of that. And only after that do you get your visas, okay? And even then, in a lot of times, this processing was taking very, very long because simply there were too many applicants going in and the application offices were closed. So they were not able to process the applications that caused a huge backlog. That means that students were not able to get the visas. Later on, what IRCC did, we all know what happened. And they basically canceled most of the visa applications. They rejected a lot of applicants. And most times what happened was this was basically due to their, their SOPs very easily they can reject you based on your SOP or overall application. There are, there are many, many reasons, of course, but the SOP was the biggest reason. And I can see that, you know, if the SOP was plagiarized, straight off, a straight up rejection was happening. A lot of people came to me. A lot of people came to me from other consulting firms. A lot of people came to me directly who also applied themselves. They used some SOP that they found online or they were basically not clear on the concepts and they mentioned something that they should not have mentioned in the SOP altogether. So these things, are actually going to kill your Canadian study permit application. This is the last step. You have already gotten the admit. Most of you guys, if you, regardless of whether you're going for the SDS or general route, this applies to both of you. Of course, SDS ones, you guys are stronger. You can make it a little bit easier, right? But general applicants, you guys are a little bit weaker because you're not showing a lot of funds. You're not getting that GIC for the most part, right? So even if you're getting it, depends, yeah, right? No, you have to qualify for the SDS. There's a, there's a certain condition, right? And you have to make sure that you are following those certain conditions. And that makes your application very, very strong in most cases. So that's why you can file in SDS. For the non-SDS ones, well, you guys can still make it. But, you know, since last year, the record has not been very, very good. I just want to tell you about that in advance. Now, how do you actually protect yourself? I'll give you a couple of tips for your SOP. I think that's the most important part. But just in case you would like your applications to be handled by us, we can actually take care of that as well. End-to-end -end processing. End-to-end -end means until you get the visa stamped. And just in case you get a refusal, we won't be charging you again. We'll be working on your application again for free within the same charge. Let me just tell you a couple of things and then I'll go on to the tips, okay? Just in case you work with us, and this is for the Canada visa application process, I'll include the link to the service page again. What we'll cover is your eligibility for SDS versus general. We'll find out if you can go for SDS if possible. Otherwise, we'll file it in general, right? Complete Canadian visa application via GC key and you will have the control to this portal. A lot of times consultants would never give you control to this. It would be on your email over here. You would have 100% of the control. So we would not be you know, taking it or snatching it away from you, you can still access the portal. Okay, then there's the study permit application form. We'll fill it with you on Zoom. Financial documentation will give you all the samples of the documents that work so that you can use those to create your own documents and we'll verify those for you. Okay, and we'll also help you correct them. Then the visa SOP, this is the most important part and this will be done by Ivy League graduates for you. So, you know, we are already working with people who have done thousands of applications on the Canadian study permit. So you don't need to worry, your applications will be in good hands and 99.99% you will never get a rejection. Okay, so we're that confident. That's why we can offer the you know full service again without any second thoughts, just in case someone gets rejected also, because that's one in probably a 10,000 cases or something like that. Now, support for optional forms. There's a lot of optional forms on the portal if you're familiar with the process. If you're not, don't worry about it. I'm just telling you there are for the most part and we'll be taking care of the entire process. We'll be filling every single form. You don't need to worry about anything. And of course, you will have dedicated support. Anytime you want to call or messages, you'll, you'll be able to reach us during working hours. So all of that is given in the visa application for Canada, just in case you're interested in the study permit, we'll be able to help. Now coming to the actual portion of how you can actually do it on your own, just in case you're doing it on your own as well, right? You have to write your own SOP, I would say. All of these things are fine. And mostly for these, you know, just in case you're doing all of this by yourself, also, you'll find decent support for everything almost, you know, online as well. And we're happy to help with that as well. But at the same point of time, when it comes to the visa SOP, you will find a lot of wrong opinions on the internet. And that is where you can get rejected for the most part, right? So we want to understand your case in depth and we want to make sure that you don't end up getting rejected like last year a lot of students were and most of that was actually IRCC's mistake not even you know the students mistakes but you know the SOP could have saved you for the most part 
the major major mistake that students are making and this is the only major mistake that I'm going to give you away in this video of course students do make a lot of mistakes but this this one particular mistake is something that you know almost everyone is making nowadays they don't realize that that they're going to study over there and they're applying for a study visa basically they talk about how Canada is the perfect place it's heaven on earth and they want to settle down over there now I'm not saying that that's not true and all of that can be true as well but you're applying for a study permit you're not applying for PR you're not applying for permanent residence you're not applying for citizenship you're applying for a study permit your role over here is to convince IRCC that I will go to Canada I will study and I will come back that's what you have to convince them and later on of course you don't have to stick to that you can you can actually go ahead and file for PR after that once your degree is complete once you're on the PZWP you can go for the PR process but right now is it really necessary for you to tell the IRCC that look I'm going over there to settle down no it's not this is just a study visa and you're gonna have to actually do the entire PR process and you know you're gonna have to file for a visa again at the end of the day at that point of time it's a separate process chances are you're gonna to have to take the IELTS also the general version etc etc so all of that will have to be done by you only but right now don't make this mistake of telling the IRCC that you are going there to settle down that's the biggest mistake you can make don't do that and there's a lot of other things as well that people do and uh, you know sometimes it's almost funny but if you're doing it for the first time it's not even your fault you can make those mistakes and that's why we are here to help just in case okay I do have a couple of other videos on the Can Canadian student visa I do have a lot of other rejection reasons I have a specific video for that you can take a look at it on my channel just in case you're interested if you're doing all of that by yourself but if you're doing that with someone's help and you're coming to us early this would be early by the way for September intake if you're coming to us right now March April somewhere around this time we can make it happen very very soon even before your program is started you know much much before that so yeah all of that is covered and I hope that this video was valuable you understand that okay last year the statistics were like that because of the COVID reason this year we are hoping for a lot of improvement but you don't want to mess up your SOP we know that last year a lot of rejections happened because of it don't plagiarize it don't make the mistakes that I'm talking about over here and certainly don't copy it off of the internet trust me 99% of the things over there they're incorrect I already verified that all right, you can sign up on the website to get some free tips and some samples also, by the way, and uh, we'll be more than happy to help in any way possible. You can follow me on Instagram. I often leave my number over there in my story so you can connect with me. And uh, I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye and take care. Subscribe to the channel if you like the content for now.